Hey everyone, welcome back to the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. I'm S.M. Cornthwaite, the author of the Hollow Screams book series, as well as Jack the Ripper, the man behind the blade, and Tales from Hell's Hollow. Uh, I am in the room with Ben, the narrator of several, a few of my books. He's also narrated a few others for other people. He's becoming a name in the horror and true crime field when it comes to audiobooks. Uh, I also have here Katie, who did the covers for my Hollow Screams books. Uh, she is also a true crime fan and a serial killer enthusiast, I guess you should say. Uh, we have Jared coming over from the Night Watch podcast. Did I say that right? Is it Night Watch? Yeah, Night, Night okay. Watch. And uh, he'll likely be joining me on the Comic Geddon TV podcast, uh, at least for a few episodes in the near future. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we have Josh, our uh, military expert slash accountant. <laughs> <laughs> and today... Slash wherever else I need to be put. Right. Today, we are going to try a different format for you guys. We're going to go audio only, see how that does with the podcast. If we get more, I guess you could say listeners uh, rather than viewers with the uh, audio only podcast, then we'll just stick with an audio only format. Today, we will be discussing the Long Island Serial Killer. Ben, you actually brought this to my attention. Uh, you posted a link about it on my Facebook page. Tell us what you know about the Long Island serial killer. I'll be honest with you. I don't know uh, a lot. I know from that article specifically, uh, I sent it because of the body parts that, that were found on a beach in Long Island. Um, multiple victims. It looks like uh, they're all linked back to sex workers, which is a very typical victim group for serial killers. Honestly, that's that article is the only thing I've read so far. So I'm curious to hear what uh, what you guys know about this. Katie, you said you've been uh, watching and reading up on it and stuff. Tell us what you found out so far. Um, I found out about the Long Island serial killer. I kind of learned about like where the the time area of it being starting around 1993 and that's where some of the first victims had been found the last ones kind of ending around 2010 2011 area with 10 to 16 victims and the patterns seem to change over the course of time but again it does turn out or seem like they are all sex workers mm -hmm. most of them found on craigslist whenever it was stated now the, the earlier the earlier ones weren't they all dismembered and then the later ones were strangled and disposed of or... uh yes a few of the earlier ones but the first three victims were not dismembered they were strangled and left in a wooded area and then a few after that before the gilgo four were uh dismembered okay two of them i saw had a matching pattern of both having their torso removed the earlier ones were just strangled and then we have like a section in the middle that were dismembered and then they started strangling and disposing of them again right yes it looks like rita sandra and colleen were strangled and left in wooded areas and jane doe seven jane doe three jane doe six jessica taylor and maureen or not maureen but jessica taylor were found with dismembered body parts and jane doe three was known as Peaches, and she was buried with her daughter, Baby Doe, about 0.4 miles away. And she was also the only African American uh, victim as well, alongside her daughter, of course. But. Yeah. And Can I ask Jane Doe 6, I actually found a break, and I believe she was recently identified as Valerie Mack. Okay. Can I say something? A couple of these, as you've described them, kind of takes me back or reminds me of like Black Dahlia. Yeah. Uh, not bit. like, well, minus the sex workers, but they're all female torso cut. Um, the only thing that would be missing is the smiley face yeah. that they carved into her. 
with the torso ones, um, they were actually completely dismembered. Okay. They found uh, some skeletal remains. Uh, I believe they found like a hand at one point and a leg, and uh, they found the torsos on their own, All right. which is very reminiscent of uh, some of the theories revolving around Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Because the, there for a while, for the longest time, they they linked Jack the Ripper to the uh, the torso uh, that was found. I can't remember exactly where the torso was found. It's a little late at night. And I haven't actually done much research into Jack the Ripper since I wrote my book. So. Right. I, I found down by the shore also brings me back to what we've talked about. I think we've mentioned in all of them is the smiley face killers. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. just down by the shore. But the thing about that the only thing that separates it is with the smiley face killers those are all men and yeah so that so that i feel like that would definitely toss out that unless you know the killer's changing up pace but the latest smiley face killer victim i believe was like 2009 that those detectives believe uh, if I can add something, I found out a little bit before we started that there was also a male that was a victim in yes. April 2011, John Doe, who died of blunt force trauma and was wearing female clothing. Mm. Oh. The uh, the theory I have revolving around that one was uh, he was thought to be a, um, a, a tra- trans. Okay. And so I'm thinking maybe the killer uh, originally thought thought he was a she right and that would be the only reason i can think of that he would have been uh one of the victims all right i do yeah. have a- there's a there's a few things i'd love to uh, i'd be interested not love to but i'd be interested to hear like uh one of the victims shanann gilbert mm-hmm. um she there was a she made a 911 call to the police and that tape is part of the investigation so nobody outside of the investigation has heard it um so that would be i'm sure there's something to be found there uh, and she was killed her body was found a week after she disappeared and her her clothes and stuff were found in a marsh uh and then her skeletal remains were found about a quarter mile away from the from her clothes mm-hmm. I have composited a list of all the confirmed connected victims. I did not uh, include the suspected victims, uh, just those that are officially declared to be a part of this case. We have the four found in 2010, uh, which include Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Uh, She was 25 years old at the time she went missing. Uh, four foot 11, 105 pounds. She was strangled, worked as a paid escort via Craigslist. Uh, last seen July 9th, 2007. Her body was found December 2010. The Long Island serial killer possibly called the victim's friend and told her Marine was staying at a whorehouse in Queens. Uh, mm-hmm. Then we have Melissa Bartholomew. Uh, she was 24 years old at the time she went missing, four foot 10, 95 pounds. Uh, Strangled, last seen July 10th, 2009. I was not able to find when they found her body. I'm assuming that they found it December of 2010 alongside the others. Uh, but the she. Date... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. The date I have down is December 2010 as well. Okay. Uh, she worked as a Craigslist escort. Uh, her sister Amanda began receiving calls from the killer using her sister's phone. Uh, then we have Megan Waterman, age 22, 5'5", five five, uh, strangled. Last seen on June 6, 2010, found December 2010, worked as a Craigslist escort. Uh, Amber Lynn Costello, age 27, 4 foot 11, 100 pounds, strangled. Last seen September 2, 2010, uh, likely found December of 2010 as well. And then we have the 2011 victims, uh, Jessica Taylor, who's 20 years old, uh, last seen July 2003. Some of her remains were found July 26, 2003 and again on March 29th 2011 where uh other remains were found uh she worked as a sex worker and she was dismembered upon death um uh, Valerie the, dis- oh, the dismemberment do you do you see that as uh uh attempting to cover up the identity or more of an escalation I see it as a way of disposing the body it's easier to haul around body parts oh, and move I them imagine. rather yeah. than a whole body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, look at, for fictional killers, look at Dexter. He always cut up the bodies and tossed them in the uh, ocean into a body of water, whatever, and let them yeah. take it away. Uh, it was easier. He could explain it more if he was caught what he was carrying in a bag, uh, if they were just small parts. Whereas if he was carrying a, a human-sized body bag or whatever, yeah. you know, wouldn't be able to explain that away. Right. <laughs> you can you can move it, you can move them piece by at a time instead yeah. of one. So if you're on your way to work and you see a dumpster downtown, you just up oh, and go on and then back and forth, back and forth. It's, it's, and, it's yeah. inter interesting you can see that as learned behavior because if he started out right. strangling and leaving the victim the way they were mm -hmm. and then moved on to dismemberment. All right. You think he could have gotten bored and tried to change it up? We don't really see because that would be like a signature. Right. We don't really see serial killers change their signatures. We especially don't see them change it and then change back. Yeah. So maybe it's more for him once his body count started to rise he needed to find a way to get rid of them easier yeah. and more uh i guess <laughs> judiciously in that in that way he but could see, have he could have strangled them and then dismembered them yeah but see i'm wondering why he would go back to the original method though because he well, starts out strangling them and just dumping their bodies and then he dismembers them and then goes back to just strangling them and dumping right oh so he went back and forth yeah oh well, hmm. shannon you brought up before the possibility of it being a well we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> <laughs> well i mean I'm just jumping in real quick with that one because maybe because that's the way that he started with just strangling and then he could manage the bodies then. Mm -hmm. Right. As he got older, he needed to break down the bodies to move it's true. Over. Now he's training somebody else so he can go back to just strangulation because he can still now the younger person can move the bodies right and that, that means, was that was something i was going to bring up during our uh, profile period um <laughs> <laughs> so um we'll we'll skip over that for right now uh we'll get into some of these other victims uh we'll get in we'll do the discussion and then we'll do our profiles and all but yes i do believe that it's actually two killers as josh so kindly uh revealed <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll have to remember to keep my I mean, mouth shut before our, before our show. Hey, <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> no. I mean, no, it wouldn't be the first time that there's two killers. I mean, uh, exactly. That's people, true. People still think believe that uh, Gacy had. Well, Gacy, he did. Uh, there's no evidence that he actually killed with them, but yeah. the Chicago Ripper crew uh, were actually employees of Gacy. Yeah. For a while. And there was a kid yeah. that lived with them that went back and forth from to Vegas, and they think that him and somebody he met in Vegas could have used Gacy's house to also kill. Him. So I mean, okay. So we've got uh, Valerie Mack, who is 24, uh, five feet tall, 100 pounds. A uh, last seen in the summer of 2000. Uh, part of her remains were found November 19th, 2000, and more were found April 4th, 2011. Identified May 28th, 2020. She worked as an escort. Her body was dismembered and wrapped in garbage bags. Uh, and un unident no, two unidentified victims found in March and April of 2011, one set of remains belonging to a toddler that was later discovered to be a, uh, an African-American woman named Peaches uh -huh. and her baby. Um, Peaches dismembered skeletal remains were found in a plastic bag. Uh, torso found in a green Rubbermaid container, June 28th, 1997. Other remains found April 11th, 2011. Uh, Baby Doe, which is Peach's daughter, uh, was between 16 and 24 months old, uh, found April 4th, 2011 with remains of other victims, body wrapped in a blanket and showed no visible signs of trauma. Wow. Uh, when John, when you ahead. kept saying that her daughter or something, I thought it, she might have been pregnant at the time and then you're like 16 to 7 months i'm like whoa what yeah yeah i mean Wow. Uh, John Doe was an Asian male, 17 to 23 years old, five foot six, 
uh, died from blunt force trauma to the head. That's very telling because that's a change in the MO. That most likely has to do with rage over the fact that it turned out it wasn't mm -hmm. a female as he was expecting her to be, is right. my guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he was found April 4th, 2011. He had been dead five to 10 years when found, uh, found wearing women's clothing, possibly trans. Uh, Jane Doe number seven, uh, her skull was found April 11th, 2011. Uh, legs were found in a garbage bag April 20th, 1996. And Shannon Gilbert worked as an escort, remains found uh, December 13th, 2011. Uh, there was, Beach, right? yeah, there was a belt found that might have belonged to the killer. Uh, I think it had the initials MH or HM or something or HW or something like that. WH and HM. WH sure and HM. Uh, the, the primary suspect was John Bittrell. Uh, who's a carpenter, he was convicted of two other murders prior to this. So let's start with Jared. What are your thoughts? Um, when it comes, I don't know, when it comes to the women, like I said before, I think that it was strangling and then he figured he needed someplace to hide a better way to move and hide the bodies um the male for some reason i keep thinking it could be I, this one could not be linked this one could be somebody went to get a prostitute found out it was male not female and you gotta think like any like 100 percent straight male if they went to go with a female and then learned it was a male any would there would be rage and you never know what people could do but at the same time maybe he tried to switch it up a little bit i honestly i don't know man it's just there's a lot there's just you know a lot the suspect that they had you said he was convicted of two murders before all this right yep so he was in prison when they was like it had to be him. Uh, I'm not. I no, I don't think so. Okay, uh, but yeah, when like I said, when it comes when it comes to the female, I I have sounds like they're all connected, but the male kind of makes me a little iffy, you know. Especially if you get some kind of like white white supremacist male that you know is all man's man, mm -hmm. and you know, I just I feel like that could, that could be anybody honestly like anyone you know in that kind of gender that's just i don't know <laughs> it's just it's just that one's iffy though you know what i mean because it's like none of the other ones were so and then you said one disappeared in 2007 and wasn't found until 2011 are you i'm wondering if the, uh if there was any like some kind of human trafficking ring and then when like <laughs> they just maybe caught a disease and was just disposed of or something happened where they couldn't be of use anymore i'm i don't yeah. think it was anything like that what we know is what we've discussed or learned from other serial killers a lot of times they'll hang on to the remains uh until they feel that uh someone is getting too close and then they'll dispose of them Man. it's a way of keeping their victims close uh being able to relive it that's why so many serial killers can go extended periods of time between each murder is because they have that victim there that's why a lot of them take souvenirs in yeah. order to uh relive the murder uh the sexual experience of it and when they it, keep when they keep the bodies or the remains around a lot of them will even have sex with the remains damn and then the way he kept contacting one of their sisters mm -hmm. with her phone or her, like that, that seems odd to me. And see that, that seems odd to me too, because it didn't happen with all of them. Did it? it just did it? one. No, it, it happened with a couple of them. Uh -oh. uh, it happened with the one sister and then a friend he would call from their phone. Were there any others that you found Katie that he contacted? Uh, not that I found something though. What if the sister, like he called the sister, what if like not the same but what if they bloodline what if they had like the same voice mm -hmm. and hearing that voice kind of but got them got them off or whatever that's possible that's what happened with uh, larry jean bell he he killed uh, a young woman and then a little girl and he would call their families with the older victim he tried threatening or not really threatening but tried claiming her sister as well okay um it's it's really strange this case
case because there are so many other cases that it could be compared to, like the strangulation part where the bodies were just disposed of and not dismembered. That reminds me of the Green Green River Killer, mm-hmm. uh, Gary Ridgway. The dismembering reminds me of Edmund Kemper, but then you have the phone calls, which remind me of Larry Jean Bell. It, it's very, very strange. And I, as Josh said, I do think we're dealing with more than one killer. Uh, I don't think it's two separate events, though. I, I think it they're two very related events, uh, which we'll get into once I once we do the profile. Josh, what are your thoughts? I'm curious with the one male, if maybe this one's just a separate case that's not tied. Was I, I don't remember. Uh, was the male dismembered? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Well, that took out the thought that maybe it was autoerotic asphyxiation that gone wrong gone wrong. Which may be the case for some of them. Maybe it started out that way. Uh, Hang on, let me read this. Uh, November 23rd, 2000, uh, not officially linked, according to the timeline. It says, hunters found the body of a white or Hispanic man in the woods off the eastbound side of the Long Island Expressway near exit 68 in North Shirley. The victim had black hair and was wearing blue and white striped gap boxer shorts his age was estimated to be between 30 and 45 according to this timeline even though other information said it is estimated to be younger he was five foot six to six feet tall and weighed 130 to 150 pounds a surgical staple was noted embedded in his chin he had multiple traumatic injuries including a crushed larynx implying he was strangled that description is a little bit different than what than the other one which said estimated him uh, to be between 17 and 23 years old but the blunt force trauma and they didn't include the uh the female clothing that he was found in but i'm not i'm not sure if that one is connected or not because if he was if he was about five foot six it might be connected Mm-hmm. If he was six, if he was closer to six foot, there's no way it would be connected. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. given his weight, because as we've seen with the others, they all correspond within a specific height and weight range. All right. Well, I think his is just, uh, there's too much that just seems off with his mm-hmm. to even really relate it with the rest. I think it was just uh, somebody trying to get off, realize he's a man, and can't do that. Out you go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's quite exactly. possible. And like I said, any hundred percent straight, never crossed his mind, male, but just you know, you you, it's yeah. I just yeah. you know, <laughs> this one, it just there's too many factors that just seem off with that one. Exactly. Though I was curious because I found a a New York Post article. And uh, as I was reading through it, I started to get the Texarkana feel to it. Okay. Uh, we had talked before where we, you know, my guess was that it was possibly a police officer mm-hmm. uh-huh. that uh, uh, had committed those. And I'm wondering if this isn't another cover-up situation. Uh, one line in this article says, uh, the Suffolk County Police Chief James Burt in 2015 was busted for the 2012 assault of a handcuffed suspect who swiped a bag of sex toys and porn from Burke's trunk. Yeah, that's police chief. If you watch his interviews with uh, Dateline and stuff on the Long Island serial killer case, he's incredibly shady. Even the, <laughs> yeah, even the, uh, the, police chief who took over after him has been uh, publicly stating that she's been cleaning up his case uh, after him and everything uh, yeah. after and, the mess he made and he had the backing of the district attorney um man he stonewalled the fbi i mean holy god yeah it, <sighs> and like i said as i was reading through this uh when we did the texarkana video <laughs> i almost felt like there was a connection there mm. all right Katie just messaged me the uh, map of where the bodies were found. Okay. Uh, They are all along the same strip, all on the same side of the road, uh, opposite from the beach. They weren't actually found on the beach. They were actually found in, it looks like wooded areas, just barely off the road, really. Hmm. Uh, like they were almost pushed out of a moving vehicle or something. Uh, I didn't have time to like completely fact check this, but I did read an article that said um, before 2010, the area where the bodies were found 
used to be fully wooded areas. They have now added a bike trail in that area. So it could possibly be chosen to be there because it was heavily wooded and nobody had would go there as often. Mm. Right. And okay. that could possibly be a reason for a switch in area as well. Mm. Yeah, because it looks like victims one, two, three, and four are pretty tightly grouped. Uh, victim eight is, is a little bit further down. Uh, victim number five is... Uh, about halfway in between the first group and then uh, victims six and seven are like way down the road quite a bit looks like oh, wow. but yeah all along the same side of the road uh, in wooded areas josh did you have anything more to add no i mean not right now that's just something that i found mm-hmm. i thought it was kind of interesting okay. and i'd kind of be i'd be curious to know more about burke yeah uh katie you want to give your take on the case um i do think they are all connected in some way i don't necessarily think that the person started off with the idea of being a serial killer i think the um, killer possibly started off just something happened like with the first one (laughs) and he seemed to like enjoy it and then started to seek that or there could have been something like towards the past that moved forward with that. And I feel like it just continued. And that's why there was changes was trying to figure out the best methods. And there, I, I also think that there is possibly two killers working together or separate, but in, in a way together. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, how about you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, based on what we know, I think, uh, and, you know, if we go back to other killers and time periods there are lots of places especially places like california and things like that where multiple serial killers have worked in the same area at the same time and uh confuse the issue because you've got multiple motives and multiple mo's going through i think that might be what's happening here i think there's one killer personally i think there's one killer of the the females and one of the male i think it's they're two different people I mean, if if we're to go back, we're we're looking at somebody who at the time of these murders, I think would have been, you know, probably 28 to 40, somewhere in that range uh, at that time. So they're older now. So I started to wonder, you know, when you think about change of MO, maybe some of it has to do with their physical capability. Uh, you know, there might have been early on uh, his his drive was for strangulation, which is a very personal way to murder somebody. And that thrill um, got him to a place where he was like, well, maybe I need to find a new way to dispose of bodies. So it takes them longer to find them. So he started dismembering. But maybe he had some kind of, I don't know, physical injury or something that might have happened happened to him during that course that made it impossible for him to do that anymore so he went back to what he knew tried and true strangulation leave the body in a wooded area somewhere the guy i think it because serial killers like this to me at least this the research i've done they they tend to ones like this i feel like they tend to watch like gary ridgeway most of the time would watch some of his victims before he'd nab them mm-hmm. so he knew their routines he knew you know the one wins ones who talked to one other ones so get them alone so that they're not you know talking to each other so if this guy was watching he's likely to know that this one wasn't female necessarily so i think there's those two particular cases are separated but uh yeah yeah i agree and what it the victim he chooses really speaks to me Mm -hmm. Uh, we see a pattern with the same height or close to it same weight also what um some of the reports like on dateline and stuff said the majority of the victims had hazel or green eyes as well no Uh, that that, sorry sorry to interrupt you but that that totally speaks to me um from you know going back through some of the killers and the who've talked about their experiences and so forth this guy You know, I'm thinking his mother was a sex worker and probably brought John's home with her and either forced him to watch or uh he he just had he knew that was what was going on um and so he devalues women most especially prostitutes he thinks prostitutes are like the lowest form just like gary ridgeway did right he was trying to cleanse uh, them right well 
I agree to an extent. I do think mm. it comes back to his mother. I don't think it has anything to do with her possibly being an escort or a prostitute. Uh, right. If we look, all the prostitutes are from Craigslist. Mm. They aren't just some street walker that he picked up uh, and decided to kill. Uh, he was looking for very specific ones. You know, in these Craigslist ads, they would give their descriptions, you know, green mm. eyes, hazel eyes. He knew uh, what he was looking for. Right. Yeah. Uh, he selected them based on their measurements and their eye color. That tells me that he comes from a very abusive mother who was prob had probably hazel or green eyes. Very petite woman, but very demanding, very domineering, very abusive. Um, what if he did? Sorry, sorry, Shane. Oh, you can ahead. finish your no, thought. No, go ahead. Uh, what, what if he did have that with his mother, but then also wound up marrying someone just like his mother that's, that's and it, very someone who has you know hazel eyes it, so he's killing his wife over and over and over again someone who's overbearing and a belligerent maybe of him and he's not like gary ridgeway was really timid with his wife and really kind of you know subservient and then this alter ego came out with the prostitutes but also and, gary ridgeway also had a very intense sexual appetite too yeah he was constantly Constantly, he constantly hungered for sex and he would often go back after he would kill the prostitutes he'd go back and have sex with their corpses over and over until they yeah. started de uh, deteriorating beyond beyond what he was able to use them for go ahead katie if i may this is more of a less probable but what i can think as well is um possibly his father figure as well mm. his father could have been cheating with a prostitute and That's... that could have caused anger in the family oh. and he may have seen this prostitute before and that might have caused more anger towards his father and totally if Very... he had a connection with his father then he would have anger with the prostitute for breaking up the family it's possible that's, that's... That's yeah. Nah, I didn't think about that. It, it, it's possible. It'd be on the low end of possibility. Mm. Yeah. Uh, possible nonetheless. I, I do think that it more closely lines up with his mother, though. Yeah. Most serial killers, they go after basically when they come from abusive households, they go after their mothers. Mm. Oh, very uh, much. And that's just judging by the strangulation of that's very personal. That's very intimate. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's taking out his rage on his uh for his mother on his mother i do feel that it is two separate killers but i think that the original killer is who's pulling the strings he's choosing the victims he's living vicariously through this new killer yeah. uh, his protege but it's very I, I think he has a strong sexual appetite too similar to uh, Ridgeway similar to BTK some of these other killers the fact that the crimes are so reminiscent of three different serial killers is very unusual to say the least you know we've connected him to uh, Ridgeway we've connected him to Kemper we've connected him to uh, Bell so I'm I'm not sure exactly how accurate my profile is going to be i do think there are some elements that we will learn that he did most definitely have that do match up with the profile i establish but a lot of it could could be completely different you know um i think that when if or when he's caught he's gonna try and say is uh religious killing he killed for god basically as a way of making himself feel better about it uh however because of all the differences in the crimes and everything i don't think he's gonna be caught anytime soon in fact i don't think he's gonna be caught at all at least the first the original killer I think he's going to go on and not get caught. When it comes to his protege, his protege may likely get caught, but the original killer, I doubt will. They said that one of the victims was dead for like 10 years when they found him in 2011. So it's been 21 years since he began, maybe even more, and they ain't caught him yet. And even right. with the way, you know, uh, DNA analysis is, and uh, analysis and everything is these days, it's, and they still haven't caught him. So there's, yeah, he could possibly never be caught. Him. Just, you know. Right. And, you know, it could be somebody, it, it could, like, I'm not saying it is, but it's 
possibility it could be like a Dexter. Somebody's on the inside too, and he knows his stuff. You know what? What do we know about the uh, police chief who originally handled this case? Is he still a- alive? Is he still around? Um, I believe John Beltrell, or not. That's not a correct one. Give me one second, because I do have some wrote about him. Uh, James Burke. I do believe he is still alive and now retired. I believe he is serving some type of sentence for other crimes committed. I know that he has had issues with obstructions of justice and other violent acts. When he's a good cop. Yeah. When was he sentenced, or how long has he been in prison? Do you, does anyone know? I don't believe he's in prison anymore. Okay. Do we know when he was in prison? Like what years? I do have an article pulled up. He pleaded guilty to assault in 2016. I know that he did spend 46 months in prison and he was ordered to pay a hundred thousand dollar fine. Okay. Looks Are you like... thinking he could be? It's possible. Definitely. Um, I mean, he could have, he would have had intimate knowledge of all of the investigations mm-hmm. of, of each victim. He would have been able to defer the investigation away from himself. Right. And when we, if you look at all his interviews, he tries to uh, disconnect all the murders. Mm. He is, he does not want to, uh, the murders to be connected at all. Uh, he keeps steering the, or he kept steering the reporters away from linking the murders together. Uh. Uh, and what we've seen with m- many serial killers, they will put themselves into the investigation. Absolutely in order Mm -hmm. to know what's going on and what better way of putting yourself into an investigation without drawing attention to yourself than being the police chief seriously you run the cops who investigate the crimes you commit yeah that's crazy and if you've got the da on your side then Mm -hmm. who's going to stop you exactly that's similar to what josh's theory was about the phantom killer in dexter yeah yeah Yeah, totally um it's not unheard of look at the uh who was the uh golden state killer he was a cop Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, so it's not unheard of for serial killers to be cops no there was Uh, another guy i was watching a show about who became uh chief of police and then mayor of a town and it wasn't mm -hmm. until after he stepped down as mayor of the town they were like oh he's a serial killer did you know that Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, okay btk he tried to become a cop uh but he ended up being uh ended up getting a job in uh you do code, and, code code enforcement Co- right huh. so he still had that authority though but mm-hmm. uh katie go uh, ahead uh he also served 46 months in prison for the assault charges in 2016 do okay. we know does he have any kind of military background because that is the only way i can think of that would connect two killers together mm-hmm. and, through military service right common ground yeah. Uh, the brotherhood mentality, you know. Sure. And killer serial or killers are drawn to military service. We mm-hmm. saw that with Son of Sam, uh, Edward Edwards, Gary Ridgeway. See, well, look at I mean, look at what's going on in the Ukraine right now. You've got to know that the as much as the, the there's so much to admire about the army and the military services and defending our countries and all of that, there's enough of a draw for people who like guns and like to shoot people. And you know, and you see the atrocities that happen in war, and you go, Well, that's I can see where this stuff happens and then they come home and there's no outlet for that well not only that but they go into the military because it's a safe place where they can kill all they want Mm -hmm. and not have to worry about repercussions yeah yeah they may not be able to get the sexual release from it but it's kind of like watching porn for them you know it kind of it helps them to stave off the urges the sexual urges that they uh, require but then when they get out of the military usually discharged for other reasons such as injury uh, mental impairment stuff like that uh, is the main reason that they would be discharged that's when they begin killing Hmm. katie did you find anything i am still looking at this current article i haven't found anything yet what was his name james burke james burke 
Last name is spelled B-U-R-K-E. Between 2010 and 2011, 11 sets of human remains were uncovered near Gilgo Beach. Uh, victims. A new podcast titled Unraveled takes a fresh look at the case, which was captured, which has captured the interest of the public and generated much media attention. Uh, several people interviewed on Unraveled claim former Suffolk County Police Chief James Burke is shrouded in accusations that he is tied to the killings. Uh, Burke served in the top job from 2011 until his re resignation in 2015. So that would have put him uh, not as chief during the murders, but yeah. following year he was jailed. I'm curious too, if we look at, if there's a connection between, and we Katie mentioned his name slightly, uh, but we did bring him up already once. John Bitroff and Burke. Bitroff was the one that was already convicted for two murders. Yeah. Uh, and he is a suspect in the Lisk killings as well. Okay. Huh. But uh, he's actually got connections to some of those that Melissa Bartholomew's mother also reported that Melissa had a lot of phone calls to Manorville from her phone, which is where Bitroff lives or lived. And it's right next to the beach. It's maybe five, ten minutes, maybe. Okay, let me see. Uh, James, so, James Burke was formerly the police chief of Suffolk County Police Department and previously served in the rank of inspector as the commanding officer of the police department's organized crime bureau. He was appointed by Suffolk County District Attorney Thomas Spoda as the chief investigator of the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office. Uh, he was made the police chief in January 2012, and it was th from then that the investigation into Long Island serial killer got murkier. Okay, I did find some information. Okay. If, if this is the correct James, which the article is matching up with everything, James was a World War II veteran of the U.S. Army from 1942 to 1946 and served in the European theater and participated in the Battle of the Bulge. How old wow. is he? Wait a minute, how old? He's older than I thought he would be. Yeah, yeah. because that, that would put him in his 70s when some of them would be. Uh, right. He was born September 24th, 1886 in New York City, New York. Uh, that, yeah, that's not... That's not... That that's not... That's not... That. That. No, that's, that's not... Uh, that is a different <laughs> birthday that I can find. <laughs> As a police chief. <laughs> yeah, that's a different birth date that I can find, but the article <laughs> that I found the military info from is James Burke, Long Island, Suffolk Chief of Department James Burke okay. as a sergeant in the first precinct 20 years ago. Twice lost his police-issued service web weapon at the same time that he carried on a sexual relationship with. Uh, most of the bodies were left in areas on the South Shore and just talking about it, but it does talk about how his service was. It talks about the schools he went to. It um, does talk about his army background. Okay. And it looks like he was married to a female named El Eleanor Durkin. Okay. In... 2019 and then 2015 he was married to betty j kincaid so okay. i might look into them a bit for <clears throat> yeah. see, like if there's any matching there i'd really like to try and find more information on him as particularly his date of birth so that we can just kind of corroborate his military yeah. service uh yeah, because if we could pull up like the precinct where he's located, it could possibly show like most of his information. Right. Since mm -hmm. actually, um, is Suffolk County in New York or is that on the Jersey side? It is a county in New York State. It's okay. Uh, let's bring up New York Department of Corrections. His information should be available on there. Yeah. B U R K E, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So sorry, guys. I got to drop off here. Okay. I got to do bedtime. All right. Have, a nice night. Have a good one, Ben. All right, guys. We'll do another one soon, hopefully. All right. All right. Take care. Hey, uh, no records found for James Burke. Okay. I looked up his age and it says he is about 56. So that would place his birth being about 19. Was it? Give me one second. I just did the math and my brain is, it's been a long work day. It was some about 1966, 1965 for his birth. 
Yeah, he wouldn't have been a World War II veteran. However, maybe his dad was. Maybe he was Possibly. named after his dad. Yeah, I was going to say, is he a junior? Um, not positive. But I'm going to see if I can pull say... this out. I would say that the James Burke, if there is a relation, the James Burke that Katie found from World War II would possibly have been a grandpa, maybe. Yeah, because I'm, I'm reading that same article. Was that the uh, James Burke Long Island wife article that you found? Yes. Yeah, that's the same one I'm looking at. Whoever wrote this up needs to check their sources. It's on the uh, Presidia Group website. Yeah, they have him. Uh, yeah, they, it's saying that drugs were found in the prison cell of a disgraced former Long Island police chief serving time for beating up a man who stole a stash of porn okay. and a sex toy from him. Uh, okay. James was a World War II veteran of the U.S. Army from 1942 to 1946 and served in the European theater and participated in the Battle of the Bulge, the Neon Rain, the allegations against him. Yeah, who, whoever wrote that up need, definitely needs to check their story. I, I found something that said James Burke, 56, who pleaded guilty to civil rights and conspiracy charges, was sentenced to 46 months in prison in 2016. That's an article from August 10th of 2021. So if he was 56 in 2021, then he was 55 in 20. I found one that said 52 in 2016, so 1964 ish, 1965. Right yeah. In area. And it would put him in the age range that I had uh, told you guys uh, in the Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, that I that I uh, profiled the killer as being yeah. mid thirties, be about what mid thirties at the time. Yeah, yeah. in the nineties. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's so. see. James Burke Police Chief Wiki. Let's see what that says. Page not found. It says that uh, the former Long Island prosecutors were sentenced in clock to protect him. So it sounds like a whole the whole department was just screwed and mm. corrupted. All right, here we go. Born July 5th, 1931, age 64. Let's see, is that the same? Well, if he was 56, if he was 56 and 16, he would have been 60 in 2020. So he'd only that that'd be around two. Mm. He'd only be 60. My my main thing right now is trying to determine if he had military back i don't think he did i just found a new york times article it says uh mr burke had undergone an unusual introduction to the policing profession as a teenager he was a key witness in one of long island's most notorious murders the killing of 13 year old named john Pius, whose battered body was found in the woods in smithtown new york in 1979 with six rocks jammed down his throat how old was he when he found when he found that this just says teenager that could be a trigger. Yeah, I, I'm really beginning to believe James Burke is should be considered the primary suspect in the Long Island serial killer case. Uh, the fact that he is hasn't been considered a suspect is very um, is very concerning because everything I've seen, everything I've you guys have told me, everything I've read, it's pointing to him. He could possibly be 60 now because let me pull up this article i believe he was 54 when he was sentenced in 2016 he was 52 52 okay so he should be oh. possibly 58 then okay so adding on to uh what i had said before the prosecutor in this case was thomas spoda who would go on to become the district attorney in suffolk county and a major supporter of mr burke's career as a young police officer mr burke developed a reputation as an aggressive street cop with a knack for catching criminals and a streak of risky behavior his career was almost derailed early on by a relationship with a prostitute ah his habit man. of losing his service weapon he kept rising through the ranks ultimately becoming the top uniformed chief of the county police force on the eastern half of Long Island, a job he secured in 2011 with Mr. Spoda's support. Sounds like we found our guy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, now, man. Now um, finding killer number two. Yeah. Uh, Bitroff. Bitroff. Tell us, about Bitroff. Bit, tell us about Bitroff. All right. So John Bitroff is an American convicted murderer and a suspect in the Long Island serial killer case. In July 2014, he was charged with the murders of Rita Tangretti and called Colleen McNamee. He is also a suspect in the murder of the third woman, Sandra Castile. Bitroff became a suspect in the unsolved murders after his brother, Timothy Bitroff, was partially matched to D. 
DNA found in the bodies in 2013. Tim submitted the sample after violating an unrelated order of protection in 2013. Do we know who the arresting officer was? No idea. That's just what I found in the first paragraph on Wikipedia. And his name was John Bitroff? B-I-T-T-R-O-L-F-F. -F. You can also look up Manorville Butcher. Uh, there was also another one that raised interest to me, which was James Bissett. Yeah. I don't have much information on him, but I did find that he had committed suicide after Gilbert's remains were found. Really? And he was also said to be a burlap sack supplier in the area. So if they were connected in any way, he would you be a triangle? Uh, you you think, going on here? Uh, I'm just saying <laughs> this. So, okay, Burlap saxophone player, right? Looking for a little, you know, action after a show um, and just maybe something happened and then that could have caught on to something he was interested in. I mean, does that ever just happen? Like, there's something happens by accident and then they get that, like, high from it and then yeah. it, it leads them to actually wanting to do it? Uh, not usually. Usually, <clears throat> serial killers, they're, the whole reason they become serial killers is traced back to their childhoods. All right. Um, <clears throat> Usually, the uh, serial killers specifically, they exhibit the McDonald triad in childhood. That's fire setting, that's cruelty to animals, that's bedwetting. Uh, as they get older, into their teens and 20s, they develop the dark triad, which is narcissism, Mach Machiavellianism, and uh, psycho psychopathy. Uh, something else that researchers found was that uh, most serial killers have ex uh, had some form of head trauma to their frontal frontal lobes during okay. childhood. So, mm. And a lot of them come from either abusive families where the mother is the dominant parent or they're adopted or uh, grew up in foster care. Oh, okay. Very rarely will a serial, come, serial killer come from a family where the father is the dominant parent. Um, however, if a couple is... If his if the serial killer's parents are in the picture, they they're generally uh, married, still together. Usually, they don't get divorced, uh, except for the case of Edmund Kemper uh, and a few others. But that's only if their parents are. Uh, actively in the picture also there is a uh, looking at the suspect list there is a question raising of is there has anyone seen any evidence because i've noticed a pattern in the suspects as well that their initials are jb are you looking at the wiki um i was looking at the suspect list i have james burke john biltrow joseph brewer and james Bissett, and then there's just Dick, Dr. Peter Hackett, who has been known in the police area that just inserted, inserts himself into those. But I've noticed that the main suspect list is all JB. You said and, P, uh, Peter Hackett, he inserts himself into the investigations? Yes, he had a big history of inserting himself into big events. He was known by the police department for inserting himself into events like that pretty often. But with the ones that still had a semi-open lead, they were all JB, and they almost all of them had some type of relation with prostitution. So more, not so much serial killer, but crime ring? Possibly. Packet being the lead? <laughs> That's something else. Yeah, I it's, think it's not unheard of because... Because as I said before, you know, we had the Chicago Ripper crew, where it was four guys, two brothers, uh, a leader uh, who basically kind of forced the others to do the killings. He kind of attributed it to uh, more of a satanic cult, even though it wasn't really ritual murder. It was basically him fulfilling his fantasies. Uh, but he was more of a Charles Manson character where he didn't actually get his hands dirty. He made the others do the killing. So that meant may also be what we're dealing with here that may also explain the variations in killings mm -hmm. too why but, some are butchered some are just strangled the locations okay. where they're dumped yeah you know, bistro officer within a couple miles of his house there was two if i can get here real quick the torsos of jessica taylor and valerie mack were recovered three miles from his house which would keep him close by most in gilgo beach <clears throat> which is all of suffolk county basically right 
I am getting I am getting increasingly interested in James Burke, even if he wasn't the killer per se. He could have been a Charles Manson type personality where he kind of organized the crimes and motivated the other killer or killers into doing his work for him. The idea that it's more than two is a possibility. Slim one, because we've only seen, as far as I know, one other serial killer group, uh, and that was the Chicago Ripper crew, other than the uh, family, which were more mass, no, spree killers rather than serial killers. But I don't know of any actual serial killer groups other than the Chicago Ripper crew. Uh, yeah, the only thing I can think of before that is like Al Capone, honestly. Mm. He'd probably probably be him and his you know mob would probably be the biggest killers that yeah. chicago's ever had but they didn't go after women or children either no 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 the, i'm just the saying. mob back in those days had rules that they lived by yeah uh, that today's mob won't nope <laughs> and, and we won't get into that no <laughs> who <laughs> If I could possibly add, James Burke and John Bertroff are two of the main ones that I've been looking at to see as kind of shady. And it occurred to me that the way it's set up, there's possibly connections in the police precinct. There could be possible connections. And then John Bertroff lived in the area of like where everybody was found. So he would know the area really well. And then James would have the connections that could possibly possibly as you said keep one that's just like running everything and then the one that's actually doing the work and he was a carpenter it's not easy to cut through bones usually he would and, have the tools to go through it and he's younger than burke too yes. uh, I, I believe the age range matches up to what i had suspected uh would we would see uh, from well, a duo Bitroff was born in 66 so there's only a two-year difference between the two of them. oh there is they it yeah. looks a lot different the bill Truff looks uh a lot younger than burke from the pictures I've seen. And with James, I think that he might not have done any of the killing or anything, but the burlap. He was a big supplier in the area, so he could have supplied the burlap to John, not thinking about like what it's going to be used for, and he might have felt like shame whenever that was found. Because right. they were all found close to each other, the ones wrapped in burlap. Right. So he might have felt um, shamed by it and felt guilty, like a survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Um, <clears throat> are we all in agreement that Bill Troff and Burke are should be considered the primary suspects? Oh, for sure. Yes. Definitely. Like, there's no relation or they didn't grow up on the same block or anything that we know of, right? Not that we can find. Like, do you think maybe, like, um, Burke might have been covering up or to protect him as, like, family member type, anything like that? Well, how many... <sighs> How long did uh, Bill Troff get in uh, serve in prison for the two murders he was convicted for? 25 years, I think is what he got. He got two counts of 25 years, I believe. So is he still in prison now? Yes. Yes. Okay, and he was convicted in 2013? 2014, I think it was. Yeah, July 2014. He was charged. That would that would line up. To our knowledge, uh, there haven't been any murders since then. Uh, no victims that have been found since uh, 2011. The most recent event was in 2020 whenever uh, Peaches was identified, I believe. Was it Peaches who was identified in 2020 or was it a different victim? Uh, 2020, I think that was uh, Valerie Mack. Okay. When they identified her using the 23 and Me. Right. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> the one that I mentioned earlier that she was recently identified. I mean, it looks like, as far as we know, no other murders have, or no other bodies have been found since 2011. Now, that isn't to say that murders happened all the way up to 2011. Uh, that's just whenever they stopped finding bodies. Which was probably about the same time that they were building that bike track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe the bike track started um, in 2010 around that area. Yep. 
Uh, and I think that's when the last of the victims went missing was 2010. Uh, so there could be uh, other victims after, you know, the bike track got put in. They just haven't found them. Uh, if that's right. the case, the killings could still be going on or killer might have aged out. I was going to say, do you think maybe they found them by beginning, like, uh, construction or work on the bike trail? No, there what were. we know was found by hunters. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but I think that the bike trail actually enhanced the finding of the bodies. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they were found really quick <clears throat> in that specific area. But it's not to say that maybe they didn't move further east down Suffolk County, down the beach. All right. I mean, it's, it's a lot of waterways running through there. <laughs> <laughs> it's suspicious though because if was his name burke the, sh- the uh, police chief yeah if burke was the killer or even in charge of the crimes you would think he would know that they were going to put in a bike trail way in advance and then he could have moved the bodies right so that they weren't found well he became police chief in 2011 and then he resigned in, right. 2015, in 2016 yeah so, so maybe the intention was going to be with him moving up with the help of that DA. Maybe the intention was supposed to be to move them, but they moved faster on the sidewalk or on the bike path and they weren't able to move them in time. What do we know about the DA? Just that him and Burke are connected from almost day one of Burke's teen years. Yeah. Why Why isn't he a suspect? Because they're just looking at him as helping to cover up more so than committing anything. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't think he had that much, if any knowledge of them actually happening. He just helped to cover it up. Right. To cover up suspicious actions by the by Burke. Because he's the one that made Burke got Burke the position. Really? So he would <clears> just <throat> want to help to cover up anything so that he doesn't look bad. Right. Like I got you this job. Anything that comes back on you is gonna come back on me. Yep. So we need to nip this in the butt for your sake and definitely mine. Kind of, yeah, I totally understand what you're talking about. Like, yeah. that would make sense, though, because, I mean, especially if they, if you said they were pretty much like friends since t- teen years, right? Yeah, so it's been since the 70s, late so, 70s. yeah. Uh, Shannon. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, link you sent me right now. Yeah, I'm that, looking at the timeline. It was, um, that is all from, I believe, the actual police department. Mm-hmm. They created it just to have, like, the whole case. There is an area for evidence, area for victims, and everything. All right, yeah. so <clears throat> in 2022, current Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney K established a multi-agency task force that includes representatives from the FBI, New York State Police, Suffolk County District Attorney's Office, and Suffolk County Sheriff's Office uh, to reinvigorate the investigation and bring the person or persons responsible for these crimes to justice uh it does look like 2011 was the last known year that bodies were found uh 20 uh, let's see 2020 is when former suffolk county police commissioner geraldine hart released previously undisclosed evidence to the public in an effort to advance the investigation police released photos of a belt believed to be handled by the suspect not belonging to any of the victims and we know the initials on the belt were HW or MH, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but see, I don't think the belt was found on a victim, right? It was just... In the area. In the area. Yeah. So it's hard to say whether or not the belt was... Could be anybody's. Right. The belt might not that... even have any meaning in this case at all. It's just coincidence that it was found in that spot. Thing that also could be possible is if it was like a local leather store, like a place that like a local area into there, it could be their um mark, like how Michael Core has theirs or like Louis Vuitton, K Spade. This yeah. could be like a local area. H&M. <laughs> yeah. That could be like the two initials, like L V and everything. And I'm trying to find leather bell chops in the area for around that time if I can. Josh, is that your dad in the background? <laughs> it's my wife. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> oh, man. We'll have to uh, play that back for her sometime. Song logs. Okay, so 
the John Doe was about five foot six inches tall, and he was between 17 and 23 years old. So it would fit that he would be um, a possible victim. Right. <clears throat> so maybe, do you think maybe the killer might have had something on him, on the police chief, on Burke? Mm -hmm. I, th I definitely think Burke is involved. <clears throat> um, it's quite possible that he was the original killer. And when he got police chief, someone else could have took it over? Well, he got police chief in 2013, right? 11. 2011. Yeah. Well, uh, then nobody would have been, had to take over because that's pretty much when the crime stopped was 2011. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> Which in and of itself is suspicious that right. no longer were was anyone going missing. I mean, the last bodies uh, were found... Let's see here. Let me bring it back up. What's the possibility of him leading uh, others to find those bodies to go look what I found? Right, like maybe. being a part of the whole thing, but now it looks good on him because right. under his reign they find these bodies. Right, and I mean the last of the victims went missing in 2010. Uh, they were found in December of 2010. There were others found in 2011, but the actual most recent victims were in 2010. Huh. So, and if if he got promoted to police chief in 2011. Do we know what when in 2011 that he was promoted? It's not. I don't see anything about when. Like, and let's. See, it was in 2011 that that prostitute came over or came uh, came out and said that she uh, was involved with Burke. Uh, the escort who identified herself as Leanne stated that at one party she had attended in April 2011 in Oak Beach, she had seen Burke drag a woman of Asian appearance by the hair to the ground. Uh, Leanne said that when she saw Burke at a later party in August 2011, she decided in, to engage in sexual activity with him. All right, let's see what... Looks like in 2002, he was named Chief of Detectives by District Attorney Spoda. Huh. And in 2012, Burke was named Suffolk County Police. Um, I'm going to have to exit it, out of that link because it was interfering with the uh, uh, Zoom. I, I, you, I caught like bits and pieces of what you just said. Is talking about his internal affairs, but in this specific area... Instead, in 2000, five years after the probe was completed, Burke was promoted to lieutenant. Then in 2002, he was named chief of detectives by district attorney Spoda. And in 2012, Burke was named Suffolk County police chief, according to Pixel, which is talking about like the crimes and just them being shocked that he was even allowed to. Because in this paragraph, it says Suffolk Police investigators concluded that in 1993, the Sergeant Burke had a months long relationship with the prostitution and drug dealing convicts and had on one occasion even left her alone in his car with his gun belt and service weapon in the back seat. The eternal affairs report obtained by Newsday also sustained that Burke had at least once been engaged in a sexual act with her in his police in his patrol car. I am trying mm. to find a woman's name. Okay. Specifically, an internal affairs report from 18 years ago shows that Sergeant Burke was attached romantically to a convicted prostitute and drug dealer named Loretta Rickenbacker. Okay. All of her multiple arrests had happened in the precinct in which Burke was a supervisor, but he still claimed the internal affairs investigator that he had no knowledge of her criminal history. Yeah, it's easy to claim that. Mm. <laughs> my, only, my only problem with Burke as a suspect is... He's not very neat. He's very sloppy. He's been the suspect for, uh, in too many things. He's been arrested, served time. That does give to itself uh, kind of match up with narcissism. Right. Uh, the fact that he became a police officer and later police chief kind of goes along in the line of Machiavellianism. And then all his uh, dealings with criminal activity, prostitutes and stuff like that kind of lends its way into the psychopathy aspect of it. So he is exhibit, he has exhibited the dark triad uh, over the course of his career. All right. You think it might have been an ego thing, though, too? What do you mean? Like he has all this power. 
kind of thing, you know, uh, you have to do as I say, or else. No, because you yeah, didn't that, have the power when the murders happened. The the power lends itself to the narcissism aspect. Yeah. Narcissists want power. They want to be admired. They want to be glorified. Um, right. And with yeah. him becoming chief of police, that would have given him everything he wanted if he wouldn't have been so corrupt and uh, went and did all the other stuff. Right. Um, but the behavior he exhibited, such as becoming violent with suspects, stuff like that, that is psychopathy. So the fact that he displays all three aspects of the dark triad uh, does make me want to look at him uh, a lot closer. I would right. like to find out more information about his childhood and adolescence. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm willing to bet he exhibited traits from the McDonald triad, uh, but I do think he had a partner. Whether or not we'll discover who that partner is, who knows? I mean, I, when it comes to a partner, something could have went wrong and Bart could have offed him. Mm. You know, I mean. And I don't think that partner, if it if that partner is Bill Troff, or Bitroff, I mean, even though he's serving prison time right now, I don't think he'll ever talk if he was the partner, I don't think he'll turn over a Burke because is New York a death penalty state? No. No. Um, were any of the victims from out of state? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think so. From what I was looking, they were all just like local prostitutes kind of thing. I mean, even if they cross over from Jersey, because we know New York and New Jersey are really close. Right. Um, that would uh, make it a federal crime and the federal is death penalty in cases of murder. If that were the case, then he, Bill Troff could be um, refusing to give up Burke because he doesn't want the death penalty. Understandable. It's quite possible the two of them may have been friends growing up. They're only a two year age gap. Yeah. yeah. And they live pretty close together. That's, that's what I was wondering if maybe it's just like, uh, childhood friendship brothership kind of thing like Burke trying to protect them throughout it all mm -hmm. and then those two murders pop up and bam he gets hit but neither one of them is going to be like well yeah I, you know I did all those other ones because that's going to get more time and more questions asked right let me check something real quick Marine Brainerd Barnes was from Norwich Connecticut okay she planned to spend the day in New York City. Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut isn't that far from New York either. Oh, yeah. So if if either the killers cross state lines or the victim cross state lines, that would make it a federal matter, I believe. And uh, neither one of them is going to throw each other under the bus for it. No, no. Uh, because if one throws the other under the bus, then that incriminates them too. And yeah. And I don't believe federal court would do a plea bargain in cases of murder like that. Yeah. Megan Waterman was from South Portland, Maine. Dang. She was staying in a, at a motel in Hoppage, New York, uh, 15 miles northeast of Gilgo Beach. So there's another crossing of state lines. So if, if law enforcement can state for sure that the killers actually crossed state lines... Or uh, if any kind of communication took place over state lines, it'd become a federal matter and the death sentence would automatically be imposed. So I'm not sure if child or murders of children is an automatic death sentence, death penalty case either. I know some states have that, um, but I'm not sure if federal does. But I, I think... We're running in circles now. We're going on two hours, and I'm definitely going to have to trim this down. There's a lot of uh, dead air on here. Yeah. I know. <laughs> for us research. Just look at trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> uh, right. But I, I do think that Burke is the main primary suspect, and right. uh, Butchroff uh, is probably secondary. He's probably the one who's – he's probably involved somehow. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. But, he has to be. It just, you know. And the fact that there hasn't been a single murder that we know of since 2010, it's a little uh, telling yeah. right there. Right, exactly. 
But like I said, I would definitely like to know more about both uh, suspects' uh, backgrounds, their families, uh, how they grew up, their parents, stuff like that. Yeah. Before I knew for sure. Uh, because, you know, adolescence is very telling when it comes to serial killer. You know, it. we've already established that Burke had the dark triad. Now, if we can connect him to the McDonald triad, then there's very strong chance that he was a killer is the killer yeah um now before we go i'm gonna go ahead and read my original profile on him on the long island serial killer that i uh, told you guys in the uh post on facebook that ben shared what i said was they should be looking for a white male likely in his mid to late 40s perhaps even early 50s between five nine and six foot tall he's likely married but the relationship isn't very intimate a military veteran once caught, he'll likely claim, claim religious regions for killing. Uh, the guy is essentially the same as the Green River Killer, Gary Ridgway. Uh, that was just based on what I knew at that point. I didn't go researching too far into it. That was just based on the cases of strangulation and the uh, non-dismembered bodies. All right. And I had no clue that the crimes extended back all the way into the 90s, possibly even 80s. Then I told Josh that, uh, because Josh, you said that my very amateur guess would be he is in his late 30s, early 40s, now with family, mother or sister uh, that were sex workers. I agree with the height and weight, probably around 200 pounds toned and attractive. Uh, I do not think he is a veteran because of the burials being on a beach is too open and risky. If they were buried in a more camouflaged area, I would agree. I do agree he will claim religious beliefs after he gets caught, even though these are more personal. Uh, before I go into my reply, Josh, did you want to uh, change anything that you said there? Okay. So mine was based off of only that one article mm -hmm. that I skimmed through right. and then just took some stabs at. Um, That's what mine said, was I'm, based on. I'm very... Uh, I'm very much an amateur in all this. <laughs> I think right. we all are, really. No, I, mean, uh, I, may, I may have some education in it, but I'm nowhere near an expert. But the knowing now that they were in a wooded area, I still don't think he was military, but the military life, right? In this case, police force uh, is very predominant in it. Um, I think he eyed that as a way of masking what he wanted to do. I, I will say that uh, I somewhat agree. Uh, if he was in the military, he didn't last long. Uh, he would yeah. have likely been uh, discharged within a matter of months, uh, similar to Son of Sam and Edward Edwards and a few other uh, serial killers that we know of that were in the military. Uh, none of them really ever lasted long except for Israel Keys. He was the only one, to my knowledge, that actually uh, served any lengthy uh, span of time in the military. Yeah, and I, I just don't think there was any amount of time uh, in the military for one or both possible killers. All right. Just the, the time frames mm -hmm. don't add up to a reason to join the military, aside from maybe some experience gaining mm -hmm. uh i mean there was nothing going on in through that time frame you had granada uh lebanon but neither of those conflicts were that drastic to really have an impact on convincing somebody to join the military so i just don't see it but the police force is an open door to gain that same experience and given the fact that it's possibly two people or more who knows having that police force on one side of it helps to not only cover it up but give you experience and knowledge of the areas uh something katie just uh, sent me a screenshot of part of uh, an article bitroff uh was a hunter who was said to enjoy the killing of animals so oh, yeah. that's one aspect yeah. of the mcdonald triad right there there's mm -hmm. one story of him actually cutting the heart out of a deer i think it was and eating it raw mm. uh, so in my reply to your comment i said uh 
The first of the victims was found 20 years ago. The majority of serial killers start after they turn 25. They weren't buried, but dumped. Because of the size of the victims, he wouldn't be terribly big. Wouldn't need to be strong either. And due to the victims being sex workers, he doesn't need to be all that attractive. He strangled them. Therefore, it was a rage killing. Uh, He likely has a strong sexual appetite, but because of his religious involvement, People will likely notice him reading the Bible at work or actively stri- trying to save others. Uh, he likely feels shame for resorting to sex workers because his spouse can't keep up with his sexual appetite. This was also based on that first article, and I had no inf- no knowledge of the uh, dismemberments. I didn't even know about Biltroff or Burke or some of these other things that we later discovered. And then later in our Uh, group conversations i came up with the idea that it was two people which would uh be why there are two different uh signatures which would also explain why he went from strangling to the dismembering and then back to strangling if they were around the same age like bill trough and burke then they could have been working at the same time rather than one teaching the other just two separate serial killers right who happened that just to... happened to be doing the same thing at the same time <laughs> right my voice is about dead <laughs> i'm i'm about dead i gotta be up in six hours so. oh wow <laughs> all right so i am going to call this episode of the unnatural thoughts podcast i'm going to get this uh, in, uh video uh, audio recording edited down all right. Um, see if maybe I can make it about an hour, uh, okay. if at all possible. <laughs> but I think we're all in agreement, and I think Ben's in agreement as well that uh, Burke and Bultroff, however you say his name, are pretty much the uh, killers. Am I correct in assuming that from each of you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, we'll post this and see if we get any hits on it. Yeah. But maybe we can get it to the 5,000 link. We, yeah, there you uh, go. With July Day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I just uh, recently went through and redid all the thumbnails uh, to make them better stand out. Uh, so if you guys want, you should go over to the channel and check those out. Uh, Skim through them about yeah, once sure. a month. <laughs> uh, anyway, this has been the Unnatural Thought Cat. This has been the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. I combined in thoughts and podcasts together the thought cast there we go <laughs> yeah the unnatural thought cast uh, i've been sm cornthwaite the author of the hollow screams book series jack the ripper the man behind the blade and tales from hell's hollow uh here with benjamin uh hunter who is the narrator for two of my books uh, as well as several other true crime and horror books uh katie who has uh, done the artwork, the cover art for my Hollow Screams books. Jared, one of the co-hosts of the Night Watch podcast, and Josh Thielen, hey, geeky, yo. military veteran and all-around good guy. Well, thank you. <laughs> so this has been the Unnatural Thoughts podcast. Everyone, take care. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.